Hi guys, good evening, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and greatest most recent episodes. Not just one episode, but the two most recent episodes of Star Wars The Bad Batch, both of which dropped today on Disney+. Plus. I just finished watching both of them. Oh, so, so good. So very, very good. Before I get into all of that and I start gushing like a fanboy, please be warned that this is a spoiler-filled, and I mean spoiler-filled review. So if you're not caught up on The Bad Batch by the two most recent episodes, which is episodes 7 and 8, you do not want to keep watching or listening as I will be discussing spoilers, plot details, character stuff, all that jazz. That being said, you have been warned. Let's dive right back into it. First and foremost, I immediately called it when in that opening scene of episode seven, when it showed the two clones in the clone bar, talking about their conflicted feelings over the destruction of Kamino and how they were a part of it. One of them threatening to go to the Senate if Rampart didn't come forward. I'm like, well, this guy's obviously a goner. I had him pegged as a dead man the second he said that. And sure enough, he was taken out via sniper. Now, at first, I thought, oh, it's got to be Crosshair. Crosshair would have no problems doing this. But then the helmet didn't look like Crosshair. So I'm like, oh, not Crosshair. Rampart's hired uh, some random assassin. Seems odd, but okay. But then, of course, it was no random assassin. It was another clone, a clone who seemed devoted to Rampart and what he's trying to do. Um, and it was all, it's always great to see Rex. Rex is like my, all, my all time favorite clone. So I always love seeing Rex. And, um, yeah, I was not surprised at all that he was the one who was going to try to smuggle the other clone slip away to safety. So I was not surprised to see Rex at all, but I was still delighted to see him all the same. Great seeing Palpatine as well. The return of Ian McDiarmid, you know, he always, uh, is awesome in this role and no matter how brief, or uh, how little screen time he has. He did get to appear in the f one of the final uh, scenes of the eighth episode, totally implicating Rampart in the destruction of Kamino, which is funny because Palpatine probably gave the order himself, or at least issued the order along in, a, in the chain of command, which and it eventually reached Rampart. So Rampart probably won't remain in... Um, custody for long he'll probably be back commanding imperials as soon as the next episode and i was hoping he'd get his comeuppance eventually maybe not anytime soon because he's such a great evil bad guy but it was kind of satisfying to watch him panic as the clone troopers took him into custody i know it's a temporary victory over ramparts because he'll probably be back commanding uh, you know, very soon, but it was still pretty satisfying to watch. I also liked the return of a couple of senators, Senator Chewy, whom we had seen in a couple, in at least one or two episodes of way back when in Star Wars: The Clone Wars, when she served as a sympathetic, uh, you know, uh, emphasizing is that the right word? Yeah, character who uh, was with the clone troopers on a couple of missions and whatnot. Just so she was no stranger to clones. And I also got excited when I don't remember, I don't know or remember her name, but the one senator in the head, in the white outfit, the head gown that who had the white head gown thing and was arguing uh, with her fellow senators about uh, passing the uh, recruitment or conscription, conscription military service bill was the same lady and the same actress. I looked it up. Her voiceover actress is the same actress who played her live action counterpart in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. She's one of the senators seen arguing with Mon Mothma and Bail Organa, debating as to whether or not they should truly fight the Empire or not. She's the one who says, if the Empire has this kind of weapon, what chance do we have? Or something like that. I can't remember her name, but I do recognize the actress and her voice. In fact, she recently appeared in the recent Dune movie. She was quite good in that too. But uh, it was really exciting to see that character return in animated form for the seventh episode of Bad Batch, which I thought was very, very cool. And when the eighth episode began, I thought, oh, are so they're doing, it's a back to, it's two episodes back to back. Great. But are they doing two completely unrelated episodes? Are we now doing a random mission with the boys? Nope, it is connected to the previous episode. And uh, sure enough, it was just as exciting as I was hoping it to be. And the seventh episode felt like a really well-crafted, well-done 
espionage thriller, you know, like a spy thriller almost. You know, it had all this cat and mouse stuff and sneaking around between Rampart, the senators, the clones who are trying to speak the truth about what happened to Camino. And it doesn't surprise me at all that the galaxy and the Senate was practically informed or told that Camino was destroyed in a cataclysmic storm, which would seem suspicious to me too, considering how well they weathered out so many storms before their destruction. So, and now that there's been proof of it, Palpatine just used it to add fuel to the fire, which was, yeah, let's uh, replace the clone troopers with stormtroopers, because clearly the clone troopers were far too willing and eager to follow orders without questioning Rampart's orders about the destruction of the Camino. So this is the perfect excuse for him to get clone to get stormtroopers uh, out there on the streets, uh, replacing the clone troopers. I did like how the seventh episode addressed and talked about something that is very reminiscent to real life, which is veterans' rights and how veterans are treated and regarded. Like, you know, there's been a lot of controversy over the years throughout many presidencies and many uh, eras of American politics about how veterans are treated and regarded and what we should do to help them, how we should benefit them, what kind of pensions should they be getting, what kind of benefits. And I felt like a lot of that was reflected when they were arguing and debating in the seventh episode when the senators were arguing with Rampart in the Senate session about what to do with all of the clones and what should they get as an overall thank you for serving the galaxy. It was a great episode. You know, both of these episode were, episodes were fantastic, but I really liked how it touched on that. I'm like, huh, they're addressing a fairly common issue that's unfortunately ongoing, which is what to do with, or not really what to do with, but how do we address, regard, and uh, treat our veterans after they've fulfilled their term of service? Like, what's next for them? So it was interesting to see Star Wars handle or tackle a subject like that, but I thought they did it very well. And like I said, both episodes were great. And um, I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Both of them were a healthy balance of grippy, sto gripping storytelling and excitement and action. I did not like seeing Echo depart from the squad. You know, he's not dead or anything, so at least there's that. But he'll probably be back in future episodes, probably later this season. It would make sense that he would join Rex in his underground movement in helping clones escape persecution or escaping Imperial... Um, Imperial uh, officers like Rampart, uh, who perhaps think they know too much, needed to be eliminated. And of course, Rex would be spearheading that movement as he's a fairly independent, free-thinking clone. So it makes sense for Echo to join him. But the squad is a bit smaller now, but um, hopefully Echo will return to the fold someday. So like I said, fantastic two episodes. I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. Man, you know, the past couple episodes we've gotten lately have just been absolute knockouts, and I hope they keep this train going. So, what did you guys think of these two most recent episodes of Bad Batch? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Were you expecting more, expecting less? Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Star Wars The Bad Batch drops new episodes every Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. Have an awesome rest of your night, everyone, and of course, until next time, may the Force be with you.